introduce our last speaker. My word, we've kept a time and this afternoon has galloped by. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce uh, Liam, who is the C CEO um, of Acro. Now, we've got a fascinating title for our last uh, panel session. Sorry, our last session. There's only one of you, Liam, isn't there? Um, <laughs> no code banking. Sorry, it's been a long, long day. No code banking, something I might know a little bit about, but I'm sure you will know far more. So without further ado, um, hello, how are you doing? Uh, very well, thank you, Helen. Good to be here. Thank you. So if you would like to uh, bring your deck up on screen, I will tell you as soon as uh, we can see it. It sometimes takes a little while. Yeah, so I've, I've loaded it up, so let me know when you see it. I will indeed. Um, I'm, I'm used to this now. I've, I'm a, <laughs> I've handed it, having done it all day. It's a little temperamental sometimes. But as soon as it's up on screen, it'd be great if you could introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your business. Um, and you are our last uh, speaker of the day. So uh, no pressure, but we need to finish yeah. on a real high. Yeah? Yeah, cool. Um, we still can't see your deck. Do you just want to try and do it again? Yeah, no. Okay. Fingers well and truly crossed, we will be able to see it. Yeah. Okay. So, so sure. And whilst you're doing that, what I will do is just say, um, um, obviously, I'm from OBE, um, Open Banking Excellence, and we have an appathon uh, which is using APIs uh, from Rails Bank, Yant, and Finastra. Uh, we were going to showcase the finale at the end, but we've extended the deadline. I'll tell you more about that um, later. Right, we can Liam, we could see your screen and now it's disappeared. And I was doing my best to um to tread water there as well. <laughs> uh, okay, we can, we're all good to go. Don't touch anything. Okay. The technology's on your side. Liam, over to you to talk about no code banking. I will be back in 20 minutes where um we will talk about it some more with the questions from the audience. Um, Have fun and good luck, Liam. Take care. So, so I'm I'm having difficulty um, sharing you. my screen. You, you, Liam, we can see your screen. Okay. Yeah. We can, oh, we can't now. Try it. Try again. I'll stay with you until we're absolutely sorted. It can okay. be fundamental, and it's been working all day. Um, so try and just try it again, and we'll see where we go. But in, but whilst we're doing that, I will just tell everybody a little bit more about the Appathon. We've um, we've extended the deadline, which is the key message that I wanted to, to share. So we won't be showcasing the finalists. So, okay. and here was me saying we're going to finish on a high. Maybe you're going to have to add lib. Would that be possible? Ah, don't touch it, Liam. We have a rock. We have. We're there. Absolutely now, there. Now Thank I have to ask one question. How do I move my slides? My I can't seem to be able to move my slides. So I'm going to ask a very very silly question. Okay, um, what I'll do is the track moderator, Victor, um, will, will help. Can you click onto the next slide? Let's just try, try it now whilst I'm with you. There you go. We'll do it the, we'll the old-fashioned way in, in slide view, yeah? Yeah, well, well I, I, again, I've set it up for presentation view and yeah. widescreen view, but it seems to be um, well, uh, also showing my notes and stuff, so I apologize that this is... Uh, well, I'll tell you what you can do then. If you drag this bottom pane down, then only you can see it, yeah? Uh, if I... But do you know, in the days of Zoom calls, we're all used to this. It happens all the time. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, at least we're not on mute. You can, we can hear each other. That's the new I'm trying going into a presentation mode, so I will... Okay. Do I, uh, so um, Victor is helping me here. So apologies, everyone. There's nothing uh, to do Take your time. Yeah. Uh, so, I, Victor, do I go into the uh, presentation mode in in PowerPoint or on on your in PowerPoint? Yeah. So when I do that, then I I disappear. Can you see me now? No, we can't. You have you just black hole. Ah, so, you back. Yeah. So, um, Victor, um. Well, why don't you come start and Victor and I will work behind the scenes to see if we can help, yeah? Yeah, okay. Well, apologies, everyone, uh, for um, uh, for the start of the talk. And uh, hopefully we're, we're, we're not starting it too much of a hello. Well, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my talk. I hope the title of my talk does not alarm the bankers nor the vendors in the audience. As you know, banks are big users and buyers of technology. And a friend of mine once told me, that banks are in effect massive IT companies 
doing a very poor job of both technology that they're using, the products they are selling, and the customers they are serving. I'm not suggesting no technology in banking. I am, however, suggesting that we in banking and technology need to get smarter about our use of technology. And it's why I'm very excited to talk about a world where the complexity of coding and the technology are no longer the problem, no longer the challenge, and that we in banking can leverage advances in technology and truly to truly service our customers in a safe, transparent, and economically viable way. Therefore, today I would like to explore the idea of no-code banking and how advances in low-code, no-code platforms will disrupt banking. For my talk today, I'd like firstly to take a quick history of, of banking and where it has come from. And as I said, the concept of banking has been around from time immemorial, from bartering in, in long gone by days to fancy algorithm trading today. I then want to go a little left field and pay a quick visit to the dentist and discuss some painful comparisons for bankers. And then I will explore a notion of big ideas and why I believe no code, no code, and is the big idea needed to save banking from itself. Liam, could I just interrupt whilst we're doing yeah. that? I've got a big idea. Why don't we try, if you just read the chat, Victor's got some notes. Try clicking on the middle icon in your screen. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that, does that help? The middle icon on your PowerPoint presentation. Go back to your PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and click on the middle icon. So um, there's three icons at the bottom of your screen in a row. Yeah, uh, yeah. go back to yeah. share. So this is in PowerPoint. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go, back, go back to share. Go back to sharing your screen with us. We've got all okay. the time in the world. Yeah, go back to sharing your screen with us. Yeah. Okay. And at the bottom of your screen, in PowerPoint, not in not on the platform, in PowerPoint, you yeah. can see three icons. Yeah. Try, in try, PowerPoint. try cl clicking on the middle icon. We need to see. Yeah. Okay. The middle. Can you see anything? No. You need to share your screen with us. We've yeah. Okay. So apologies, everyone. Nothing to record. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it will work 101 times when you try and do it this evening, won't it? We know that. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, share your screen with us first. That's the. So, so, yeah. so do the app. Okay, so share. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll tell you when we can see your screen. And it's coming up now. Okay, everybody's yeah. wishing you luck. At the very, very bottom where you can see comments. Next to comments, there's three little icons. There's four squares in the middle. Try clicking on that. Right, try clicking there, try clicking on the next one. Uh, there you go. Yeah, but uh, the only problem with that is that I don't see in my notes. <laughs> that is. Um... Okay, well then I want you to be comfortable. Please uh, go back yeah, to the arrows and, and you can see your notes. That's fine. Can you see, can you see that now? No, you, you've, you've gone again. So. It's okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, the side of PowerPoint, okay. Can you can you can you see it now? Can you? Yes, I can see your screen perfectly. Beautiful. Well, right. and just give me one, one second because I will uh, use the power of technology and bring up my presentation on my. Um, I knew that's what you were going to do. I need to, uh, <laughs> everybody in technology is resourceful, and you have just proven that. Yeah. Yes, Everybody is rooting for you, yeah? yeah. So just yeah. bear with me. There's no, yeah. So what we can see on the screen is a history of banking in antiquity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So bear, bear with me. Two fabulous old coins, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So well, one of the things that I and I'm still just bear with me a minute because I I still can't uh, bring up my. But it's it's nearly there. Okay, it'll take a while to load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not up against a deadline. You're the last guy on I the guess. <laughs> So we're all good. Yeah, we're it's just coming up on my phone. So just bear with me a minute. Good. So tell us a little bit about your company whilst we're waiting for it to load. Sorry, I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Get, um, yeah. Females can multitask. Yes, but I, yeah. And I have to say, talking about females, API days run um, 
uh, have a 80% of the speakers this year have been women, a really good uh, gender diversity mix. Uh, it is something they're very proud of. Are we ready to go, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. so Without quick history of banking. Question. Victor will make me disappear by the power of technology. <laughs> it is all yours. Victor, uh, you have uh, got all the time in the world. Um, relax, and um, we can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you for your so, persistence. Oh, yeah. So I want to bring you on a big, quick tour of kind of safe banking. And so the concept of banking has been around from time immemorial, from kind of barter, bar, uh, bartering to the fancy algorithms algorithmic trading of today and um so you know in about the sixth century the whole concept of coins came into place and that was the first i suppose manifestation of what we would consider in today's world or still exists in today's world and um, the term banking uh, comes from the old italian word banca meaning table or the old high german word a bank or bank for bench and counter which is you know with where most of us do our kind of on our our day to day uh, banking, uh, but it brings into the the concept of where the word bank comes from. And it was not really until about the 14th century when the Mendici family started um, what we now call banking, um, and it was the first notable bank um, to to start. And uh, you know, so we have about 600 years of banking as we know it today. And the basic concept of banking. Um, is very simple. It's money in and out plus a fee. And I would make the argument that not a lot has changed really since the 14th century, except that maybe organizations have got more complex and the complexity of op operating these organizations has increased. But banking, I believe, is neither complex nor complicated, but that we in banking have met it so, and that banking is, uh, and that we need to kind of move move with the times. In terms of Wall Street, um, the uh, first of, of the fancy banking bonds were issued by the Dutch East Company in about 1600. And again, you know, uh, on the Wall Street side of banking, things have moved very fast in terms of technology and especially in algorithmic trading. But the basic con context as such has not changed the premise of it. In terms of, again, the types of stuff that we use today in banking, the first credit card arrived in about 1958, the, master, the start of what we now call um, kind of uh, MasterCard started in 69, Visa came in the late 70s, and the whole, and especially with what we've seen with COVID, you know, tap and pay, um, the whole NFC um, started in the late 90s with um, the mobile, uh, mobile um, uh, petrol uh, stations in the US uh, speeding up kind of the payment of purchases uh, of, of gasoline. The first of ATMs uh, came around in, 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 the 1960, in 1967 in England, and currently there are about 3 million ATMs, kind of say worldwide. And uh, a big in, invention and in, uh, improvement in banking came in the 60s with the advent of mainframes. And, um, and that really, I suppose, started processing um, the, the banking, Bank branching, bank branching, and doing the closing the books at the end of day, it is uh, at at scale. And then, more recently, in terms of um, uh, in the last kind of say five years, what we've been seeing in the marketplace is um, the likes of Revolution, N twenty six, and Monzo really disrupting it in terms of the marketplace. But I would also suggest that things haven't changed that much either. That it's kind of more kind of grabbing market share than fundamentally changing anything that we do in banking. So this then kind of suggests of why I need to take a, tr a trip to the dentist. While this is an old slide, it is a good slide in that about seven years ago, about 70% of millennials would prefer to go to the dentist rather than listen to what banks were saying. And I suppose therein lies a big problem for banking that if a customer would prefer to go to a dentist, rather than engage in some kind of a fundamental utility uh, that's needed in this world that we in banking have got a big problem, but therein also kind of lies an opportunity. So this is where then I think there's an opportunity for that we need some big ideas to change uh, what's going on in banking. So a bunch of years ago, Robert, two years ago, I was given a presentation to Deutsche Börse in uh, Frankfurt and I, before the talk, I came across this 
um, slide about big ideas for Lufthansa. And it says, big ideas start with a sketch. And I think for any of the big ideas that we can really talk about, they're usually very, very simple. And a big example of big ideas is Elon Musk and his company SpaceX and Telsa. Nothing to do with rockets or nothing to do with cars, but his sketch of an idea for SpaceX, SpaceX is to colonize Mars and make humans a multi-planetary species. In terms of te Tesla is to accelerate uh, the tra world's transition to sustainability. Nothing to do with said rockets and nothing to do with cars. So that's why I would suggest that the Revoluts and the N26 and the Monzos aren't really a big idea, a revolution. They are, you know, kind of doing what the big incumbents are doing, but faster and better and smarter and not underestimating or not taking from what they have achieved. But in one way, it could be described as uh, lipstick on a pig. So my big idea in banking is to make it ridiculously simple. And by that, I mean to eliminate complexity and stop forcing the way banks works and their complexity, their inefficiencies on me as a customer and to really take me seriously and stop frustrating me. Whether we're a business a customer of a bank or an SME customer of a bank or a retail customer of a bank, we have to conform to, I suppose, the way the banks work rather than them accommodating the way we work. So the power balance up to now has always been the banks dictated the terms of how we engaged with them. So my idea is that we should radically simplify it, eliminate the complexity and really treat me um, with respect. And I believe the way to simplifying banks is through this phenomenal called no code. And no code is a big idea whose time has come and some of the work I'm doing actually with uh, PMI, the Project Management Institute out of Philadelphia at the moment on the whole citizen development movement for large organizations is that there's this whole belief that no code is a movement, is a revolution, is a different way to work or play, not just for uh, banking, but for humanity um, in general. So low code, no code can be described several ways. Um, it's often called low code, no code, because in some of the platforms that are developed, there is a little bit of code, but the, f the overall approach is that, you know, you don't have to do hard kind of say coding. Um, it is also known as citizen developer. And by that means is that the, shall we say, the average person in an organization can develop without having to um, understand the complexities of coding. And low code, no code is a phenomenal movement is really building on the scientific and engineering advances over the last five years in areas such as cloud, AI, machine learning. And one way of trying, trying to, I suppose, imagine what this world is like is to think Siri, Alexa. You ask them questions and they answer, but in using that technology, you don't know how to know about natural language processing. You don't know how, have to understand semantic technologies nor do you need to know linguistic algorithms. It just work. So too with where this whole movement of low code, no code is going. The, the industries are, are is taking serious uh, notice of it. And the big vendors like Microsoft and Google, along with Amazon and Salesforce have offerings in this area. Microsoft offerings called Power Platform. Google is called App Sheets. And they are very, very focused on helping organizations with kind of more process improvement. Think of robotic process automation, but on steroids. Um, uh, Google's app sheets are paranoid and, and describing themselves as we are no code. Um, likewise, in the startup world, uh, there is the first of the unicorns in it, where on the recent uh, investment that Uncork got, they've hit the unicorn status with a valuation of about two billion. And uh, companies like OutSystems and Betty Blocks from VEMS are all part of this um, high um, new um, technology platforms to help companies work in different ways and to derive kind of good business outcomes. So this low code, no code it, for employee, employees, it's a way for enable kind of problem solving or business process literate people to have the freedom and authority really to develop and deploy 
kind of applications into production end to end. And I can't th key, key here is the freedom authority to do it without depending on central IT or ops to develop and deploy because hitherto when you wanted to put stuff into production, you had to go through the gatekeepers of IT and ops to bring it into, into production. Now with the likes of these platforms that Microsoft and Google provide along with the young corks and the Betty blocks, you as a problem solver can actually create code, create applications that will go through the process, but go into production and, and be of value. For organizations such as banks, it's a net low code, no code solves problems at the point of pain for those experienced pain. I'm talking to one organization in Brazil at the moment and with the whole kind of say COVID and changing uh, work, they're using um, the Microsoft application platform, uh, power platform um, for their frontline staff to really solve problems um, you know, immediately uh, with their customers rather than going through the traditional route of sending in a, a request to build a new application. Uh, for large organizations, central functions like IT will no longer be the bottleneck, be the bottleneck as is evidenced by the Brazilian example I just used. And key is kind of knowledge held in spreadsheets can be repurposed and accessed across the organization. One organization that I'm aware of has 5,000 spreadsheets and um, where kind of critical business data is held in it from, you know, production runs to kind of margins and so forth. So that's a very dangerous situation for organizations uh, to be running their business. And for organizations to the ability to reduce cost and complexity, along with increasing operation efficiency is, is very attractive. And of course, the ability to attract and retrain staff is important. For banking customers, the vision that this low code, no code or citizen developer offers is the ability for me to create my, my own products within certain parameters. And that's me as a consumer, or that's me as, as a business person where basically I can communicate my needs and potentially let banks compete for my business, where I can easily move my banking needs between banks or service providers or are distributed amongst those. But ultimately it's where I'm in control and the whole power in and over the relationship between the bank and the customer changes to the customer, and not the bank. And most critically for both customers and the bank itself that you have transparency of fees and services. And for banks, it enables problem solvers to solve and shine, solve problems there and then on the spot or get shit done. It reduces bottlenecks, uh, eliminates complexity, improves efficiency, and it brings new products to market in the matter of weeks rather than the typical 18 plus months. Critically, central functions like tech, ops, security, risk, and compliance, they basically establish the guardrails within which all of this will work. And I think the critical way that this enables a new way of working where the banks earn the right to be the custodian, the advisor, and the banker uh, of customers. Specifically for banks, for the CIOs, the CTOs, and the COOs, and um, it enables them and the key requirement from kind of the, the central or, or the, the group function is enables them to manage the complexity of entitlements, manage the APIs and manage the security. But it also enables other parts of the organization to solve problems and innovation in a secure, scalable and well-governed manner. And it also offers the opportunity from stuff that happens in the shadow IT becoming mainstream. So examples in banking, this whole notion of low code, no code is still at an early stage. And um, most of the examples that are that are out there at the moment um, tend to be in round kind of robotic process automation, but on steroids. But a good example, the contrarian would be Stripe. Stripe is an elegant API that if you were building a web application, you no longer have to worry about the comp complexity of a payment system and just pull down a beautifully engineered AP, uh, payment API from Stripe. In terms of banking overall, the best organization that really gets citizen development in terms of banking is a group out of London called Crucible that have a very disruptive view 
of how product engineering and citizen development can be used to um, change the way, change the operating models of banks and how they run internally and how they engage with the customers. Of course, one of the sponsors of this event, Open Bank Project, have now got a whole low code, no code approach using Node Red as the low code, no pro low code, no code platform, whereby you using Node Red and um, can actually have access to very sophisticated full stack bank infrastructure that Open Bank Project uh, has uh, uh, made. Blue Zest is a good example in London where in five months, they wrote a whole mortgage underwriting um, application uh, process uh, with using three people, which was unbelievable um, and very fast compared with traditional ways of doing it. Uh, Credit Agricole and, and Guarantee BBVA are doing some innovative stuff in the marketplace. And as I mentioned, the likes of Project Management Institute are, have a whole, I suppose, governance model around how to use this at scale within large organizations at, at banks. And I'm aware of the, of the consulting work FTI are doing in this space, working with banking customers to help them bring this new way of working in a safe, compliant and scalable way. And I suppose my clo closing comment is with low code, no code, just keep it simple. Thank you. Liam, I am back with you. I have to say that was fascinating. Thank you very, very much. And you pulled that back amazingly because uh, we've finished on time. And it is important that we finish on time um, because there is networking now. And um, there was one very, very quick question, if we could answer it in a, in a minute. Um, landscape APIs, uh, this is one from Rogan Hughes. Um, but if, if, if you are... Uh, are one of the thousands of in-between banks, how do you get on that journey? Well, I think there are... 30 seconds, please, yeah. Uh, the easiest way is to go to the web, pick down one of the one of the open source applications and get going. There you go. Fab, fabulous. Absolutely fantastic. And Rowan, thank you very much for your question. So, uh, Liam, you have uh, finished our, our um, session and our track um, on an absolute high. Thank you very, very much. All that remains is, sorry, please go. Well, thank you, Helen. My pleasure. Um, all that remains is for me to say a big thank you for everybody for keeping me company throughout this afternoon and for listening to Liam and to encourage you now to jump over and to start networking. I know it's a new sort of norm, isn't it, virtual networking? But once you, uh, you give it a go, it really is good fun. So um, enjoy the rest of your time with API Days. And um, it's been a pleasure to, to have you all as company. Um, and if ever you want to join me around our, our OBE campfires, it's the third Thursday every month. Open Banking Excellence um, is an absolute privilege to work with API Days and, and to host uh, this track and the track I hosted this morning. Thank you very much and goodbye. Take care. Stay safe and take care is what I was trying to say. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>